I've been using the iPad to get more serious work done now for quite a long time, and as iPad OS has matured, it's also picked up a huge amount of shortcuts, features, and little hacks, which has made getting your work done on it that bit easier. So today I'm going to share with you my top 10 favorite iPad productivity tips, so you can get more work done too. And just a note, I'm not going to touch on things like sidecar and multitasking, because I'm going to assume that most of you out there already know about those. Oh, and 90% of you watching this video aren't subscribed, so if you do like iPad content and aesthetic tech videos, be sure to come and join the community. Anyway, let's get right into it. First up is one I wish I knew about a lot earlier than I'm willing to admit. It's instant though. It's super simple, if you tap the screen with your Apple Pencil while it's off, it will launch directly into a note and you can begin writing without unlocking the iPad. This will then save directly to your Notes app and you can check it or edit it later on. It's super useful if you're in a pinch and really need to write something down. This should be on by default as well, but if it's not, it's lying around in the Notes settings menu and with a few taps, you can ensure it's on. Oh, and this only works with iPads that support the second generation Apple Pencil, so do keep that in mind. Following on from there, if you're deep within an app or if you find something you want to quickly note down without jumping back and forth between apps, you can swipe up diagonally from the bottom right of the screen to access Quick Notes. This gives you a small window to quickly write something down, drag in a link to save for later, or even better, copy some information and have the website embedded into that note. These save onto your notes like normal, and it's a fantastic way just to keep track of those little things. While staying on the topic of note taking, for number two, I wanted to mention how to use Scribble to convert your notes into text. This is a more obvious one if you've been enjoying the newer iPad updates that came with iPad OS 15, but it's still a good one. In the default notes app, if you're using the Apple Pencil to take a bunch of notes, you can simply double tap them with your finger, hit convert to text, and bam. That's all you have to do to get your notes into a text form so you can use them within documents or emails. This is super useful if you're like me and prefer writing notes rather than typing them. This also allows me to throw those notes into something like Notion so I can keep everything together or to even pop them in an email to someone. I loved this update when it came out and I'm still using it pretty much every day now. Continuing with another trick that requires the pencil, tip number three is all about screenshots. Rather than pressing various button combinations to take a screenshot like we all do, you can use the Apple Pencil to swipe up diagonally from the bottom left of the iPad to take a screenshot, which you can then immediately mark up if you need to. Once you're in this menu, you can also press the full screen screenshot at the top here and then scroll down to capture the entire page. This then turns it into a PDF, which you can then mark up, send to someone, or just save it for later. That's really the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Apple Pencil tricks. There's about a million other things it can do to help with your productivity, and it could probably easily be its own video. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see something on that. At tip number four, we have a three finger gesture for copy and paste. I actually found out this one by accident and I'm so happy I did because it's made me much quicker at working on my iPad. It's really simple this one. If you highlight some text and want to copy it, just use three fingers to pinch. This then copies whatever you've highlighted. Then when you want to paste it, just use three fingers again in a zooming motion to paste. If you can learn to integrate this into your workflow, it will make everything that much quicker on your iPad and you'll never want to copy and paste like normal again. Sticking with the copy and paste theme for number five, it's a tip that's really, really easy to forget about, but if you're fully into the Apple ecosystem, it's well worth remembering. It's using copy and paste within the context of Handoff. Handoff allows you to copy things from your Mac, iPhone, or iPad, and then paste it on any of those other devices. Here, let me show you how that works. So here's a long piece of text on my iPhone that I want to bring onto my iPad really quickly. All I have to do is highlight and copy it, and then come over to my iPad and hit paste, and boom, it's right there. And if I really wanted to, I can also paste that onto my Mac. This works any way around, so I can copy stuff on my Mac and paste it to my iPad or iPhone or whatever. This works for loads of different bits of media like photos too. Handoff features like this aren't anything new, they've been out for a while, but it's a crazy useful feature when you're working between devices. Oh, and if this feature isn't working for you, make sure Handoff is enabled on all of your devices along with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It needs those to work and can sometimes be disabled somewhere in your settings. 
This next one has been the biggest help for me to get more stuff done while using my iPad. Tip number six is using focus modes to create custom home screens. Combining this with a small widget, I've designed three different home screen setups that allow me to switch my iPad into different modes depending on what I'm trying to do. I've got one for productivity, one for gaming, and one to take me back to my standard iPad setup. Each setting has different parameters like silencing my notifications and setting my status to away, so others know I'm busy working or just not available to talk right now. These are seriously so useful and have helped me to get on with my work massively by reducing the distractions that the iPad really is full of. I've made an entire video on this on how I got it working, so I'll link it below if you want to check it out and if you want to make your own custom home screens for yourself. Next up at number seven is one I use all the time as someone who's not a fan of physical keyboards on the iPad. It's making the on-screen keyboard iPhone size by simply pinching your fingers on it. This not only makes the keyboard smaller, but it allows your apps to return to their normal full-size selves, as they usually get cut off when you're using the normal full-sized on-screen keyboard. You can move the keyboard around on the screen too, which is really great. And I also find it makes me a faster typer in general too, by making use of the swipe keyboard rather than hammering on the keys. If you do get sick of it and want to return to normal, just pinch to zoom and it pops back into normal place. This is super useful when you've got multiple full apps on the go and screen real estate is getting tight, or if you're on apps that scroll like Twitter so you can see more of what's going on. Number eight is another tip that I often forget, so I'm putting this in here to remind myself as much as you. It's the four finger swipe to move between apps. This one pretty much does what it says on the tin. Placing all four fingers on your screen and then swiping either left or right will bring up your most recent app, allowing you to jump between things really smoothly and simply. I use this sometimes rather than dual screening because having the whole app open is a little bit nicer than having two open next to each other. There's not much more to it than that, but this can speed up your iPad use significantly too, if you remember to use it. This next one isn't iPad specific, but it's crazy useful regardless. For number nine, it's using the text replacement feature to your advantage. And I've got to thank Ellie Awesome for this tip, which I picked up from her TikTok. So thank you for that. This feature allows you to replace text with certain words or phrases. For example, a double press of the at symbol types out my email and typing ADRSS will type out my entire address for things like email. The best way to make use of this is to do it for something that you have to type over and over again, like an email. Again, this one is lying around in the settings menu under general, then keyboard. So have a go and see how much time you can save with some shortcuts. Lastly, at number 10 is another more recent feature that I find myself using a lot, not only on my iPad, but also a huge amount on my iPhone, and it's live text. This is a really wicked use of AI that allows you to grab text and other rich information like phone numbers and emails from images. Let me show you an example. Here's a photo of my business card. It's got some normal text on it, which I can highlight and copy, but also a web address, which I can click on and visit, and also an email address, which I can press and send a message to super quickly. This works for things like phone numbers and locations as well. I often make use of it to copy hashtags I see from Instagram posts that I want to use, or if I'm typing a caption that I can't save to a draft for some reason, I just screenshot what I've written and then copy it right back in. I was lukewarm on this feature when Apple announced it, but honestly, I've grown to use it and really, really appreciate it over time. Okay, I couldn't leave it there, so here's a final bonus productivity tip I wanted to share with you. One that I've developed myself and I use to really get into a working mindset. It's this little lo-fi button shortcut I've added to my home screen. A simple tap of this opens up YouTube and loads in the classic lo-fi girl video, then jumps you back to your home screen so you can carry on with work without having the distraction of finding it or doing anything like that. I'm not a pro at making these by any means, but if you want this little, very simple shortcut, then I'll link it in the description below so you can grab it and hopefully enjoy it as much as I do. So there's a little pile of tips and tricks I've picked up over the last year or so. I hope you got something from it. Also, when I was writing this script, I had to delete so many of the other tips that I'd found. So if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see a part two or something, then let me know. There's plenty of other tips which I use and find really useful on the iPad, and I could easily share those with you. Anyway, that does wrap up this one. If you've enjoyed it, pop a like, that'd be massive, and I will see you all in the next one.